Hey y'all, hi, I'm Hannah, and I'm a member of the YouTube beauty community, meaning that even though some of my content is about fashion and other kinds of design, the majority of my videos are about makeup, skincare, and other beauty products. On beauty YouTube, there is an entire subcategory of videos called declutters. In a beauty declutter video, the influencer making the video goes through a bunch of products, usually makeup, decides which ones to keep, and gets rid of the rest. It's an editing, a cleansing, a paring down, a separating of the wheat from the chaff. I've been thinking lots of thoughts about makeup collection declutters recently because I'm long overdue to film one. I'm actually currently preparing to film a massive multi-video collection-wide declutter. In and amongst all of this thinking, I've realized that I'm kind of starting to see declutters in a different light now after making beauty videos for almost five years, having gone through so many different phases of content creation and filmed so many declutters. So in this video, I'm going to share those thoughts with you. First, I'm going to talk about why I think we like to watch declutters and what purpose I think they do serve. Then I'm going to talk about the problem that I see with declutters on YouTube. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about what we can do going forward to address this problem. That's what this video is about. Please subscribe if you like it. And let's go ahead and get right into the meat of the video. Okay, part one, why do we like declutters and what are they good for? Some practical obvious reasons and some deeper reasons, going from shallow to deep, basically. On a basic level, it's just visually engaging content, seeing all that makeup in one place. Beauty lovers love products and we love them for their own sake. We love the packaging, the textures, the shapes, the colors. Done properly, a declutter includes everything, right? You see all of somebody's lipsticks in one place. And that's just compelling on a surface level. We as a community, we love to see that. And that shared love is a good thing. It's one of the things that brings us together as a community. We also love declutters because they are massive multi-product reviews. And this is totally practical too and totally legit. A lot of us are here watching beauty videos on YouTube because we're seeking specific information about beauty products from real people who have tried them. If someone's going through all of her makeup talking about what she wants to keep and what she doesn't want to keep and why, we are freebasing a massive stream of that exact information. It's glorious. And again, that shared interest, that shared passion is what connects us. We also love declutters because they give us a peek into someone else's makeup collection. And you know, we're nosy. There's this kind of peek behind the curtain aspect to a declutter, all the little grubby details of what someone hangs on to. There's a kind of messiness to a declutter and we love that, I think there's a sense of relatability and comfort there. Again, connection and joy all good. Okay, digging a bit deeper now. I think some of us love declutters because they can be inspirational. They inspire us to declutter our own things. I think for many of us, it's hard to let go of what we own. It's hard to get rid of stuff for any number of reasons. Sometimes it can be hard to acknowledge that we don't actually want something if we spent money on it or if we got it as a gift. Sometimes stuff feels emotional, feels like a safety blanket, even if we never touch it, even if we forget it's there. For some of us, getting rid of stuff feels wasteful, or rather the fact that we're not using it feels wasteful, and getting rid of it because we're not using it is a reminder of the fact that we're not using it. It makes us feel guilty, it makes us feel bad that we didn't get good use out of it. Many of us have, I think, these psychological barriers to decluttering, and watching someone else deal with those barriers on camera encourages us to face them ourselves. Digging even deeper, why is that? Why do we welcome that inspiration? It's because on some level, many of us are craving decluttered lives. We're attracted to the idea of having space, of having an edit, of being less overwhelmed. There's a reason that minimalism is such a popular topic right now. Declutter content is satisfying because it taps on our shared longing for clarity and simplicity. So backing up and putting all of these reasons together, we have our answer. Why is declutter content so popular? It's because we have a longing for more and a longing for less simultaneously. I feel like this is the classic condition of contemporary capitalism. We have a longing for more and a longing for less simultaneously, and the declutter video satisfies both of those longings at the same time. It shows us mountains of makeup and gives us a rapid-fire barrage of information about packaging, formulas, colors, wear time, which we gobble up insatiably. More, more, more. But it also shows us whittling, editing, streamlining, 
planning, organizing, making those hard decisions that allow someone to go from too much to just enough. Declutter content is everything that we want all at the same time. And listen, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with this. This itself, what I just described, is not the problem that I have with declutter videos. Because when it comes to the struggle between wanting to own lovely things and not wanting to own too much, nobody has the perfect answer. Not me, not the other influencers making declutter content, and it's too much to expect anyone to have the perfect answer. We are all facing these questions. Questions. We're living these questions together. And one of the things that declutter videos do is they allow us to dwell in the material space of these questions, to feel our feelings about too muchness and not enoughness, to want more and want less at the same time and work through our feelings about that. When it comes to trying to figure out what you want for yourself, your space, your stuff, your daily life, and what will bring you lasting contentment, instead of momentary satisfaction, only you can figure that out. But in many cases, beauty videos, and especially declutter videos, can help shine a light on the issue and help you figure out what you want to do, especially if you watch them thoughtfully. So we're all trying to make our way through the questions of our century, find balance for ourselves, get to know ourselves better, and declutter content can help us with that seeking. The way it gives us both at the same time, excess and austerity, abundance, and editing. I mean, at the very least, it's great entertainment, and at best, it can actually be illuminating. So what's the problem? I present to you part two of the video, The Problem. One of the things I've learned over the past five years is that working in beauty in the 21st century changes a person's relationship with beauty products. Those of us on this side of the screen filming declutter content, I think that many of us are seeking a balance between exuberant love of beauty and a desire for space and clarity, just like many of you are. That's why we declutter. But for a variety of reasons, our economic relationship with beauty products is different than it is for people watching us declutter. Here are three reasons why influencers' economic relationship with beauty products is different. Number one, we get some of our products for free for review. And you know, by definition, that creates a different economic relationship to the product. Number two, when we buy beauty products ourselves, even just with our own money because we want them, we often end up earning money as a result. Even if we don't use up the product, the products are tools for our work, you know, like wood for a woodworker. So the idea of getting your money's worth, which we talk about so much in beauty, has a totally different meaning. The makeup in my drawers back before I started my YouTube channel used to represent the end of the line for my consumer dollar. The final result of me having worked, earned money, and then tried to spend that money wisely. The products would be sitting there in my drawers either either feeling like good decisions because I really love them and use them, or feeling like bad decisions because I didn't end up really liking them and didn't use them that much. Now the products in my drawers are something else entirely. They're not the end of the line. They're inside the functioning system of my business, which itself earns money. Owning them for any length of time helps me do my work rather than subtracting from the resources that I earn with my work. And the third reason I'll give you here for why an influencer's economic relationship with products is different is just that because of reviewing, we have so much. We have more product at any one time than we can possibly use. So decluttering, even decluttering products that we haven't used up or haven't even used very much, it just has to happen on a practical level. All of these realities change the value of products in our lives. For the beauty products in my drawers, even the ones that I really love, the nature of their value to me is different now than it would have been if I hadn't gone down this career path. In some ways are more valuable because even the makeup that I don't like helps me create content. And in some ways, they're less valuable because they didn't enter my life as the result of a high stakes 
spending decision. My ownership of makeup, as I'm realizing, as I back up and look at what I'm doing and think about what it means for me to declutter, my ownership of makeup is now part of this flowing circular system that contributes to my income. Now, this has taken some getting used to, right? As you can tell, it's taken me time to be able to articulate it to myself. But this in and of itself, what I just said, is not the problem either. I think it's quite normal, very normal, that working in a given industry will change your relationship with the materials of that industry. For example, when I designed and handmade tango clothes for a living, which is what I was doing before YouTube, my relationship with fabric was bananas. I would like go to these warehouses in downtown LA and buy bolts of fabric bigger than my body. And I used those materials to make a product that I sold. So, you know, I've been here before. It makes sense to me. Individually, the components of the situation all make sense. Declutter videos have a lot to offer, and that makes sense. Being an influencer means having a different relationship with products than the average consumer, and that makes sense. But when you put it all together, you get this reality. We have declutter videos, which are videos that help us clarify questions of value to ourselves. They help us figure out which makeup might be valuable to us, which makeup might end up being less valuable. And they might even help us figure out whether we value abundance or austerity more and to what degree we're going to pursue abundance and to what degree we're going to pursue austerity. And then we have all the people making the videos. And for the people making the videos, the value of the products in question has been altered by their careers. Because of the work that we do, we own more makeup up than we otherwise would, and we think about it, and we care about it in different ways than we otherwise would, and we declutter it differently than we otherwise would. For some influencers, that might mean keeping more stuff, like keeping a catalog of things that you might not otherwise keep so that you have reference points. And for other influencers like me, and I think this is what's about to happen to me going into December, that means decluttering in one fell swoop more makeup than you ever anticipated you would own over the course of of your lifetime before getting into this gig. And again, there's nothing inherently wrong with either of those. It's just our industry, just like any industry. But it is a problem, and here we're getting to the heart of the video, prepare yourselves. It is a problem if you as a viewer watch these influencers declutter videos and use what you see as a template for your own way of using and discarding makeup. If you let yourself be influenced, not to put too fine a point on it, but if you let yourself be influenced not just by the information about formulas and packaging and colors, which is great, but also by the economic relationship with products that you're seeing play out on your screen. I came up with a metaphor, so I'm reapplying my lip gloss. It's like, it's like, imagine going to the grocery store with a friend who is a professional chef. She runs a restaurant, your friend, right? So she's going around the grocery store grabbing all this food, barrels of rice, crates of fruit, and you are just getting groceries for yourself for the week or maybe for your family for the week. So she buys tons, you just buy a normal amount, and then you both go home with your groceries. You cook up all your food, and hopefully it'll all get eaten. You know, there will be a little bit of waste. There always is. Maybe the last banana will go bad. Maybe your kids won't finish all the food on their plate, and some of it will go in the compost. But it'll be a normal amount of waste for your household. And the cost-benefit analysis of the amount of money you spent, the food you bought, the food you ate, and the waste you produced, all of that will work out, be rational, and be to your benefit. Your friend, the chef, she will produce way more food, right? Hundreds of plates of food, maybe. And there will be way more waste. Several diners in the restaurant will fail to finish their meals, as people do, and lots of food will go into the compost. But because your friend is running a business, the cost-benefit analysis of money spent, food purchased, food eaten, and waste produced, it will not only work out, it will turn a profit. And the difference is totally clear in this scenario. You would never try to keep up with your friend grocery shopping, right? You would never try to buy the 
amount of food that she buys or even see that as aspirational. You would never try to emulate her shopping haul or take her shopping habits as a template for your own. Of course you wouldn't do that. She runs a restaurant. But, and this is, I think, why I want to make this video. It's much harder to make that distinction when you're a beauty lover in the beauty community watching a video, watching a declutter, because from the other side of the screen, and I know this from experience, from before I was on this side, I used to be on that side, right? From the other side of the screen, it's easy to forget, if you even ever knew, that a successful influencer is actually running a business. The business of social media is still very new. It's like the Wild West. It's weird even for us. So not all viewers instinctively sense it as a business and perceive the influencer's makeup, for example, as work materials, the way that we all can easily understand that the food and kitchen tools purchased by a professional chef are different to her than food and kitchen tools that we purchase are to us. It's easy to forget that when you watch her declutter, it's like being in the kitchen at your friend's restaurant, watching her go through her three like industrial sized refrigerators and decide which food is still good and which food is past its prime and has to go. And you know, this confusion, this lack of clarity, it becomes a problem if and when it causes people to buy and declutter makeup at a volume and a pace that matches what they see on YouTube. A problem for most people, right? If you have like a lot of money, if you have a ton of money, it might not be the same kind of problem. But for most people, that behavior causes a financial problem. And it can also perpetuate the emotional and spiritual problems that I was experiencing before my no buy year. And if you haven't watched any content about about my no buy year and you want to know more about that, understand what I'm talking about, click through. I'll put some videos in the description box down below about my no buy year. But I'll briefly say I was buying beauty products as a form of escapism, trying to light up my life, change my life. And they always disappointed me on some level, right? Because you can't change your life by buying stuff. So I'd buy them. They'd disappoint me. I would buy something else. It would disappoint me. And then I would end up with a lot of products on the chopping block, as they say, because I'd bought them, expecting them to fill a hole in my life that beauty products just can't fill. And I would watch declutters on YouTube, right? These beauty gurus with piles of makeup. And that would make me feel like my behavior was normal because I was not fully processing that what I was watching was content made by people who work in the beauty industry. And that because I didn't work in the beauty industry, my makeup collection was actually wildly disproportionate to my income. So what can we do about this? I'm not trying to be a killed Joy. I love filming declutters and I love watching them. And lest we forget, I gave a bunch of reasons at the beginning of the video for why declutter videos can make really excellent, valuable content that contribute to wisdom, clarity, community, and growth. So how can we make sure that we benefit from the good side of declutter content and don't experience the potential downsides? This brings me to part three, what we can do about it. I'll start with what I'm going to do as a content creator which is to try to remember to issue a reminder at the beginning of every declutter that most of the makeup in the video was either given to me for review or purchased by me for review, that I work in this industry and that my relationship with the products is affected by that work. But I think that as viewers, we can also protect ourselves. You have the power to protect yourself, even if you're watching a content creator who doesn't issue a reminder like that. I would say just when you watch declutters, Remember what you're watching. It might feel like you're at your friend's house watching her go through her makeup drawers, but it's not that. It's like you're at your friend's restaurant watching her go through the industrial refrigerators, deciding which food is still good and what has to go. Just fix this reality in your mind when you're watching declutter content. Know that you are watching someone who works in beauty go through the tools of her trade. I'm excited about filming my upcoming declutter series, and I'm really hoping that I'll be able to deliver a lot of valuable information about colors and formulas and packaging. And this is a good reminder to me to prioritize that information because whether I choose to keep something or not, that detailed information about the products themselves is useful. And of course, you know, in my somewhat unusual context of value, when I really love a product, when I choose to keep something, it speaks volumes in its own way. I know that that's one of the main reasons people watch declutters and that is a good reason. My hope is that people watching those videos will take the information and apply it to 
their own systems, their own sense of use value, their own paths towards balance. But most importantly, I think, when you are able, take a step back and look at the larger picture, the desire for less and the desire for more coexisting inside of us. A very confusing aspect of living through this strange, charged moment in history. And it's okay not to have the answer. It's, it's okay not to know. Strict and stringent minimalism isn't the solution for most of us, and neither is mindless overconsumption. And depending on your context, it can be a wildly difficult emotional journey just beginning to find your balance. It can take a lot of bravery and strength to start thinking about sloughing off old habits and starting to look for your balance. I speak from experience. Perfection in this journey is not really realistic and it's not required, not for any of us on this side of the screen and not for you either. But in my experience, it's a huge relief just to remember that the desire for less and the desire for more both exist inside of me because it makes the impulses less urgent. When I desperately want to buy something new and beautiful, I can remember that I often feel like I have too much and like I desperately want to declutter my stuff. And that helps me slow down and make better choices. And when I feel overwhelmed, as I sometimes do, and like I have way too much stuff and I need to get rid of all of it and I feel all weird and freaky outy, I can remember what it feels like to want something new and beautiful and how exciting it was when I acquired the special things that I own. And it helps me feel grateful and lucky to have them. And that also helps me slow down, calm down, and feel more at peace with how things are. So that's kind of where I'm at right now with my journey with this stuff, strange as it has been made by my becoming, uh, you know, like a micro influencer, <laughs> like an actual working beauty influencer. And I'm really hoping the declutter content that I'm about to film and serve to you in the coming weeks, which I will be filming in this spirit, can also be received in this spirit and can contribute to joy and health and balance for those of you who choose to watch it. Thank you so much for being here today. And and don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.